Hi everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. I am wearing my Christmas pullover in this pre-Christmas video. I have my reindeer here, and I'm actually competing for ugliest Christmas sweater in an online video. But getting serious now, I want to talk about the situation with Omicron, especially the data we're seeing emerge out of South Africa. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a video about Omicron, how it had first been sequenced in South Africa and announced over there, although nobody knows for sure that it actually started in South Africa. It's actually what we're assuming. But over the last few days and couple of weeks, we've been actually getting some rather optimistic news from South Africa. It's been reported by some media outlets, but nowhere near as much as it should be, considering that it may be good news. The first thing to say is that many doctors and organizations in South Africa are reporting that this wave of COVID is much more mild than previous waves. In fact, many people over there, if not most people, appear to be having minor cold-like symptoms. And there was some data released from South Africa suggesting that people with Omicron were 80% less likely to be hospitalized than previous variants, including Delta. In fact, in some regions of South Africa, COVID-19 cases are absolutely plummeting. They're almost half of what they were within the last few weeks. Again, good news. And actually, what makes this more remarkable and should bode well as well for other countries is that South Africa has a much lower vaccination rate than many other nations. The latest statistics I saw was a vaccination rate percentage fully vaccinated of between 35 and 45 percent, a much lower number than many other countries. Yet they are still experiencing a rapid plummet. So one would think that nations with more immunity should do even better. Now, if this is the case that Omicron is much more mild than previous variants, this shouldn't be a complete surprise. In fact, this is how a lot of pandemics quote unquote end. The viruses mutate into more milder versions and then kind of fizzle out. So let's keep our fingers crossed. A word of caution, however, as somebody who works with a lot of vulnerable people every day, people who are elderly, people with immune compromise, I can tell you that it doesn't take a lot to push these people over the edge. What may be mild cold-like symptoms for many other people can quickly push these people in hospital. And that's why I would still advise if you're in a region of the world where Omicron is spreading, be a bit careful over this holiday season, especially if you are around vulnerable people. If you have any symptoms whatsoever, you may want to take extra precautions and be very careful around any vulnerable people in your life. So as cases in South Africa rapidly decline and many other nations in Europe, North America are seeing surges in number of cases and many of these countries are actually instituting restrictions and even lockdowns again, we should remember that other parts of the world are actually doing quite well right now. Some of these countries with very low reported cases include Japan, which I talked about earlier this week. India, with a massive population, appears to have an extremely low number of cases. Brazil is another country, and actually a lot of these nations are in the Southern Hemisphere, which shouldn't surprise us right now, because I've been saying for a few months that we in colder countries should expect that in the winter, when people are indoors, ideal for respiratory viruses to spread. This should not come as a surprise to us that any respiratory virus is surging during winter months. But what we hope and keep our fingers crossed for is that the data from South Africa plays out in other countries as well. And maybe just maybe in these other countries in Europe and North America, we will see rapid declines following the current surges. So as we approach Christmas in this season of goodwill, it's important to try to stay optimistic and hopeful for the future. A couple of years ago, I was fortunate enough to visit Israel, and we did a tour of the country, and we visited many of the Holy Land sites, including Jerusalem and Bethlehem. And a very special person was born a couple of thousand years ago. And whether you celebrate Christmas in a religious way or simply as a season of goodwill, each one of us can draw inspiration from the life of Jesus. He's somebody during a remarkably short public life, achieved a massive amount, and his legacy obviously lives on till this day. While many other people have been forgotten, 2,000 years later, millions of people still remember Jesus' name. 
He's somebody who tried his best to stand up for truth, honesty, and he was somebody who spoke up to entrenched, powerful institutions at the time, many of which were completely corrupted, whether that was the Roman Empire or many local religious institutions. He's somebody who didn't hesitate to speak truth to those in power. He made a lot of enemies, but he was extremely brave. And unfortunately, as we all know, he ended up paying the ultimate price. But his life story is something that we can all draw inspiration from. And on that note, all we can do is our best in our everyday lives, stand true to our principles and beliefs, expecting that better days will lie ahead, remaining hopeful and always exercising compassion and empathy in our everyday interactions. I wish all of you out there and your families a very happy, merry and peaceful Christmas.